According to the lore, Montfort has the most experience fighting on foot due to the mountainous terrain in which they rule, which makes the black and white heraldry of the Montfort a great color scheme for your men at arms. However, black and white can be absolutely dreadful to paint. This step-by-step -step guide will get your Montfort men at arms to the tabletop quickly while still looking absolutely fantastic. Here we go. As always, we're going to start out with the Zenithal coat using some dead white as a last dry brush. If you don't know how to Zenithal coat, look up another video online. Um, it's just a method of priming the model to have different levels of shade, which is going to add a lot of depth very easily, allowing us to paint this model much more quickly. I have the shield hand separate. I didn't glue it on for ease of painting and I'm gonna dry brush the back, but I'm not gonna bother doing the front because all the paints we're gonna use on the front are totally opaque. So it wouldn't do us any benefit. We definitely wanna make lines of white on the back of the shield and I'll show you why when we get to that, but it's gonna add a little bit of texture here where normally GW just leaves it very flat. Moving on, I like to use Skeleton Horde for the wood of my model's weapons. It gives it a lighter wood tone, almost like it's newer wood. Um, but experiment, if there's other colors you like, you know, go for it. Uh, weird wood, wild wood, whatever that is, um, gives you a nice dark wood color as well if you want to try that out. We're using contrast here, nice and easy, just give a nice even coat. Um, and letting some of that white dry brush we did shine through and add some texture to the wood. Working inside out as you tend to do, now we're going to do the skin. For this model, I'm using Elven Skin uh, by Two Thin Coats. A GW equivalent would be Kislev Flesh, and it's going to give us a nice kind of tannish tone. Um, I recommend using a lot of different skin tones for your models. It just makes the whole unit look good. Uh, besides this one, you know, Cadian Flesh by GW is really good. Um, Two Thin Coats has other flesh tones. Um, Gilliman's Flesh, if you want to do a contrast, are all good options. Um, and you can also thin them out or darken them as needed just give your models some different tones and make things look just a little bit more realistic, you know what I mean? Now I'm going to get the hand, just being careful not to paint on the wooden shaft we've already done. And now I'm going to take some of GW's Reichland Flush Shade and go over the skin again, add some depth to it. We'll go back over and highlight later, but it's just going to make the skin look a lot better for very little effort. Moving on to the boots, we're going to stick with the contrast paints for quickness. I'm going to use some Gore Grunt de Fur. It's going to give us a nice reddish brown for the shoes. Again, there's a lot of different colors here. If you're doing a whole unit of these, I recommend using a few different ones. Saigor Brown's really good. Dark Templar Black. You know, just your browns, your blacks, um, your beige colors all work pretty okay for boots.
For his undercoat, I'm just going to leave the work we did with the Xenothal coating. Um, I'm going to leave it at an off-white. I'm just going to cover it again with Agrax Earth Earthshade to make it look grimy, make it look more peasant-y. Um, it's just going to give us a nice, dirty color. Now onto his next layer of clothing here. I actually think I'm going to do um, a two-tone here. I'm going to use Heraldry Colors of Montfort. I'm going to use this Trooper White from Two Thin Coats. It's kind of an off-white to do one side. And then I'm going to do a black color for the other side. Um, again, I do all my troops just a little bit differently. So I look cohesive, part of a unit, but I don't want them looking all the same. I really like Two Thin Coats as a brand. Um, I find I'm using them more and more and they go on very smooth. Even this white covers very cleanly, very easy to paint with. Definitely look worth looking into. I only want to do about half of his coat, trying to eyeball in the middle. Um, I'm just freehanding it, but you could also rip off a little piece of painter's tape and use it as a guide so you directly only do half. Um, definitely do the white before you do the black because it's easy to cover the white if you mess up. It is harder to cover the black. For the leather on this miniature, I'm using some Agaros Dunes. It's going to give it a very lovely light leather color that I like a lot. Snake bite leather is also very good. Saigo brown can work as a dark leather. You could also mix and match these contrast paints to get different tones. And again, using some different leather here and there can make your unit both cohesive, but still some individualism in there. I find the best way to use contrast paints is to break it down to sections and then try to paint it all using one smooth motion. I always go down. I try not to go back up with a brush. I don't want to push the paint back up. I just want to let it go down and pull at the bottom. All right, I should have done this next part before I did the leather, um, but I got a little ahead of myself. But now I'm just going to take some black Templar and I am going to do the other side of this two-toned uh, coat I'm doing. Again, I'm doing this freehand. Um, just eyeballing it for a straight line, but feel free to, you know, use a strip of painter's tape to get a real crisp line if you think you need it. Ideally, you'd paint inside to outside. It makes it easier to correct things if you make a mistake, but you know, hey, things happen. Just going to finish up this cloth here and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so for this top leather strip, I'm actually going to use snake bite leather, a different kind of leather than I did before. It's just going to add, you know, some more tonage to the model, make it look more interesting. Um, I do think, you know, different shades in the model are more pleasing than just doing the entire thing in one shade of leather. Snake bite likes the pool and stain. A lot of people call them like coffee stains. Um, so you gotta be real careful when you use it. You wanna get a real even coat and careful not to go over places you've already been. For the belt, I'm just gonna use another shade of brown. Here I'm using a very dark Saigor brown. I'm gonna use a small brush and just very careful to try not to get any on the rest of his leather armor. Feel free to paint over the metal of his buckle because it will cover real easy with a metallic paint a little later. So now I'm going to bring back the dead white and I'm just going to go over the shield on his chest with this as a base coat. I'm using trooper white as an off white for cloth and then a real dead white, a strong true white for the shields. Um, they're similar but slightly different and so the metallics, the painted metallics and the cloth will look different which I think is really nice. I'm 
Moving on to the metallics, I'm just going to use this plate armor from Two Thin Coats. I really do like their metallic paints, and I'm going to do all the metallic parts of this model, the weapon and the armor. Now there are little leather straps underneath this helmet. Be sure to avoid that. We're just gonna paint those with shading. Um, so try not to get any metallic paints on them. Be sure to get the metallics of the belt buckle as well. You can see it behind the shield on the finished model, but it's really hard to reach with the brush, so be sure to do it now. So now I'm going to do the black half of the heraldry here on this chest using a bit of painter's tape as a guide. Um, so you can see how I do that. I'm just gonna use Vallejo's black here and just one smooth line straight down the middle. Here we go. So now I'm gonna bust out the known oil and go over the metallic parts and maybe around the belt. Um, this will help add depth to metallic parts. It'll also help with your transitions on different parts of the model like the belt and the coat if you got like little white gaps there or little harsh lines. Um, known oil really just helps smooth out the model and it's rare I paint anything that I don't use, you know, at least a little bit of this stuff.
white can be a pain to add depth to, but we're gonna cheat. We're gonna use this contrast apothecary white. Um, it's no good over gray or anything like you would in normal contrast, but putting that contrast over where you already painted white um, does a great job of adding depth and layers to it. It's a really great little hack. I'm going to add a little bit of Agrax Earthshade to the wraps on his arm just to give him more of a dirty peasant feel. Okay, we're really coming along here. Now to do the skin highlights, I'm going to mix that Elven skin with a little bit of the Trooper White. And that's going to give me a lighter tone of the skin to do the raised portions of his face and fingers like his nose, cheekbones, digits, etc. And the camera got a little out of focus for this, and I apologize for that, but basically any raised part on his face, his nose, his cheekbones, anything that stands out, I'm going to hit with this lighter skin tone to help it pop and to add depth to something so small. And now we do the same thing for his hands, just getting the raised areas of his fingers and his thumbs to help add depth to the model. Continuing the process of doing these highlights, I'm going to break back out the dead white and I'm going to do all the edges of his cloth where we used the trooper white before. And now for the very highest of the highlights, we're going to use this pure white. Just being extra careful here, we only want a thin line, we don't want it too thick, we don't want it wavy, we just want a thin, solid, straight line. It's not easy at first, to be honest, but it comes with practice. And now we are going to continue the practice on the other side with Eshin Gray to do the highlights on the black side of his cloak. Even though we use the contrast paint here, um, the contrast black doesn't give us a lot of lows, a lot of highs. We're just going to use this Eshin Gray and then maybe even, even a thin highlight of Dawnstone to help out with that add depth, add, add character to the piece. And now we are just following up on that with a little bit of Dawnstone, um, a thinner highlight, and only the very highest points of the black. You can kind of see this all come together and add a little bit of character and life to the model a lot more than if we just did a flat black. Okay, so now we're transitioning to the back of the shield. Um, I never know what to do with these. 
There's not a lot of marking here. Some people do them black. I like to make them as wood as the back of the shield should probably either be wood or leather. Um, and so what I do is we have the dry brush before. Now I'm putting this wild wood on there. And when this dries, this is gonna leave markings in it almost like it's wood, um, which is gonna look pretty good in the shadows of your minute arms um, pressed against their body. Next, we're gonna grab some black Templar again and do the sleeve. Obviously, if you're doing your soldier a different color sleeve on the other side, just make sure they match. Um, this will poke out a little bit, not a lot. So I usually just do a cover. Um, I don't necessarily go through the work of highlighting it like I did on the outside of his coat. Similar for the hand here, we're just gonna make it match the flesh of the rest of the body, bringing back the elven skin from two thin coats. and then a little skeleton horde for the bracing around the shield. Transitioning to the front of the shield, we're just gonna get a little of our plate armor again and go over all the metal bits. Um, don't have to be too careful not to get any markings in the center of the shield because we're going to paint over that with black later anyways. Um, some people might like to go inside outside of this. I just think it's much faster to not have to be neat on the outside of the shield and then be more careful on the inside rather than vice versa, but either way works. Next we're going to go back to our pure black from Vallejo. And we're going to paint all the inside of these shields. Just make sure it has a nice, even, smooth layer. Because we're working with black, any mistakes are pretty easy to see. So just take your time here and try not to paint over your metal bits. Once dry, we're gonna go back over the shield with some Nuln Oil. Um, go ahead and cover the whole figure, but especially make sure you get on the rivets along the side of the shield and along the inside edges of the shield to help add depth. After it was given adequate time to dry, I went ahead and applied my decal at this point. Um, these older decals are kind of fragile, they tear easy, you gotta do things a little bit differently. So before you apply those, if you haven't done it before, maybe check out my video on that subject to help you not waste these and make sure they go on right the first time. Then move the decal to where you want it to be and go ahead and let it dry. So I got ahead of myself again and I realized once I glued the arm on that I haven't highlighted the metal bits yet. Um, you should definitely do this before the decal gets put in, but it is what it is. I'm just going to go back now and highlight all the edges with rune fang steel as well as all the rivets and on the weapons and his helmet. So when I highlight like this, I don't want a lot of paint on the brush, I just want that to be covered. And then I'm going to use the side of my fine point here to just brush along those edges, which will give us a nice, even, thin highlight. Now I'm going to hit the top of these rivets here to make those really stand out and give a lot of depth to the shield. Same for the weapon, just being very careful, finding those edges, using the side of our brush and just giving a nice little clean silver line.
And finally, we're just doing the same thing for the metal in his neck guard and helmet for the last few finishing touches on this model. And that completes the walkthrough on this particular model. Remember, there's a lot of times you can substitute different leather colors, different skin colors, um, and basically different patterns on his clothes to keep things as part of the same unit, but still unique and different. So when you have the whole thing together, it creates something cohesive yet full of individual flavor. That's my video. It was a lot of fun to do. I hope you found it helpful and hopefully you'll come back for future videos.